2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20. Uh, just to give it context, we'll go back to verse 18, and I'm reading from the King James Version for the sake of uh, some of the wording. 2 Samuel 12, 18 and 20. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will we then vex him? How will he then vex himself if we tell him the child is dead? In other words... He's going to go crazy. But when David saw his servants whisper, David perceived that the child had died. And so verse 20 says, Then David arose from the earth, and he washed, and he anointed himself. And he changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Would you help me pray today? Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and to be in your presence. This is holy ground. I know you're here because your people have worshiped you. And your word says that if we worship you, you'll inhabit our praises. So because you're here, anything is possible. Everything is possible. Father, be the Lord of this house. Have your way. Do whatever you want with whomever you want at whatever moment you want. I ask you to touch our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our minds to discern. With us saith the word of the Lord. And I ask that you would confirm your word with signs, miracles, and wonders. And when we go back to our vehicle, vehicles, we'll say, surely... We've been in the presence of the Lord. And we ask it all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you say amen? amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. By the way, don't miss tonight. We're going to have a Holy Ghost revival night. We'll lay hands on everybody. Call a friend. Unblock somebody on Facebook. Tell them to come to church. Then block them again. But don't miss tonight. We're going to have a great, great time with the Lord. Amen. It is without a doubt that David had reached this proverbial apex that every Christian believer is seeking to obtain. He had reached that place that everyone is looking to get to. It's called the favor of God. And if you've been in church a long time, especially in a spirit-filled atmosphere, I'm talking about the favor uh, of God. Uh, I want to favor. Uh, that he has reached that place where you don't just say the word, but you add a ah, like, you're, like you got allergies at the end of every word. He has reached the favor ah, of God. Ah. We need a new mic before Pastor Ben gets it here in the next service. David is chosen of God, forgotten by man, but remembered by God. He is loved of God, yet despised by men at times. He's a hero to Israel. He has beat the lions, the tigers, and the bears. Oh my, let alone, and, and may we not remind you or forget about Goliath as well. Yet David's issue is not the great things that God has done, but to comprehend and to be able to reconcile that God can do great things with you, but you're still a human being. That you, you can be mightily used of the Lord. You can be anointed of the Lord. You can have great victories in the Lord, but you can still have a bad day. Now, I am a preacher's kid. I grew up in church. This is all I have ever known. I, I mean, I could tell you stories about the things I've seen and I know about church. But uh, even though I was, you know, baptized in the Holy Ghost when I was eight years old, baptized in water when I was nine years old, preached my first sermon when I was 13 years old, then got in trouble when I was 14 years old. I mean, this is all, because I knew how to play church, I knew how to sound like church, I knew how to do church, but I didn't always know how to live church. And because of that, I had technical difficulties, for lack of a better term, and I had stuff that stirred up in my life. And so I've never been able to identify with perfect people. You give me an Enoch that's so perfect that God says, you know what? You're too good for down there. Let me bring you up here. I don't get it. Melchizedek, type and foreshadow of Jesus Christ. I don't get you. But you give me a Samson, a Rahab. Don't judge me. I felt judgment. I felt it. You give me a sister Rahab, a Samson. A I'm like, boy, I get you. I like, I understand you. I can understand in perfect people. I read about a man named Elijah who one day calls fire down from heaven. Could you imagine if you prayed right now and a fireball fell, you would stop the service and take a picture and put it on social media right now. You'd, you'd promote it. You'd put $5 behind that post too right now. Be like, this is the hand that calls fire from heaven. Imagine Elijah, how cool he felt that day. If it had been me, I'd have felt tall for the first time in my life. I'd have been walking through like, watch out with this hand right here. This is the fire hand. But that same night, 
That same night, if we're in a Pentecostal church, I'd say, touch somebody and say that same night. That same night, <laughs> Jezebel said, I swear by the gods, I'm going to kill him. Let me tell you what Elijah didn't say. He didn't say, Jesse, the same God that delivered fire will consume you as well. He didn't say that. Turns out Brother Elijah has run out of fire. He doesn't even have smoke because Jezebel says, I'm going to kill him. And Elijah says, oh, my God. And he runs and he hides in a cave. And that encourages me. That makes me feel good. Because that lets me know that you, you can get your name in the Bible and still have a bad day. And that doesn't mean your grandma played with the Ouija board. And that doesn't mean that there's something weird with you and that you should have gone trick-or-treating two weeks ago. It doesn't mean that there's some demon in your family. It means that you're human. And as humans, we have great days and bad days and sickness and health and riches and poverty. It just means that we're normal. And as normal human beings, sometimes stuff happens. But it's hard to reconcile that the same mind that was in Christ Jesus is now on the inside of us. And that when we were baptized, we became a new creature. And that you're more than a conqueror. And that you're the head and not the tail. That you're blessed coming in. You can't say those verses without that. You're blessed coming in. And you're blessed. Oh, and I mean, you just, you know all of those things. But it's hard to understand how I can be blessed coming here. And blessed going out. And I got angels all around me. But I still got a bad attitude. And stuff is still happening. And sickness is attacking my home. Here is the revelation that God brought me all the way from Tennessee to tell OC. You're not weird. You're human. And as humans, we have struggles and temptations and good days and bad days and emotions. There's days, ladies and gentlemen, where you're walking under the anointing of that old timeless hymn of Sister Alicia Keys. This girl is on fire. Ah. I mean, you're just, I mean, you're walking and then you get to work and they're like, girl, can I talk to you? Yeah, girl, you fired. Pack it up. You got to go. And I mean, you showed up to work listening to Caleb. You're singing Matt Redman songs the whole way. I mean, you got that hairbrush out this morning. You were trying to take a shower, but the Holy Ghost took over, and you're in the mirror. This is the day. Uh, this is the day. I mean, you're so spiritual, you don't have coffee and donuts. You have grape juice and crackers because you got Holy Communion every morning. I mean, you can be, you can do it. You can't take a bath because the water's part because of the holiness that's on your life. All of that can be true about you, and then you'll get into traffic. Somebody will cut you off, and you won't talk in heavenly tongues. You talk in another tongue. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and that just means that you're human. David the man. I'm not talking about the king. I'm not talking about the psalmist. I'm not talking about the worshiper. David the man is living in a mess. There's been a little technical difficulty. There's been a little sin. There's been some issues in his life. And now trial and tribulation has come to his home. Now my apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, financial guru, and best friend. He says he's Batman. I'm Robin, but I won't wear tights. My best friend, my pastor, my friend, Pastor Sam Rodriguez, says that you can be so blessed that even your problem turn into blessings and that's what's happened to David because he's in a mess and the prophet comes to rebuke him and the prophet says you've created a mess but here's the good news you're not going to die you're going to keep living I'm prophesying to someone in this house that needs to hear this word today there is a David in this house that needs to know this word today this week's drama isn't going to cancel out God's destiny over your life. I don't know what happened. I don't know who did it to you. I don't know what's going on in your marriage, your money, your ministry. I don't know who attacked you. I don't know who blocked you. But hear the word of the Lord. This is not going to destroy God's destiny over your life. The prophet comes and says, David, God has brought you from too much. He's brought you through too much. He's brought you a mighty long way, as we used to say, for God to give up on you right now. It's as if God was saying, I didn't call you off of the hill. I didn't anoint you to bring victory over the Philistines, and I didn't give you the throne for it to end up in disaster because of one bad decision. If you're going to, if you if you'll trust me, you're not just going to make it to here. You're going to make it all the way because he that began the good work in you is going to perfect it, is going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that lie of the enemy that said what you did 
last week is going to cancel God's promise over your life. If God started the work, God's going to finish the work. You're going to make it and the devil's going to be defeated and the devil's going to be humiliated and hell's going to be reminded. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mm, trying to contain my Pentecost right now. David has caused a mess, and he starts praying. He hears that he's going to have life, but his child is dying. And he does what any of us would have done. He begins to, pr to pray and to fast and to intercede. He is believing God for a miracle. He's believing God for the supernatural. But what he is believing God for does not take place, which begs the question, I know how you act when you win. I know how you react when God answers your prayer. But what do you do when things don't go your way? What do you do? And this is kind of weird to say in church. But what do you do when you lose? What's your response? Because that's the true test of faith. I can guarantee you with everything inside of me, God always answers prayer. What I can't promise you is that he'll answer every prayer the way you want him to answer the prayer. Because his ways aren't our ways. His, his rationale looking at eternity is different from what I see looking at the small picture. And David's advisors are convinced that he's going to lose his mind. They are convinced that he is going to go crazy. What's David going to do? He's sinned. He's lost a son. Now what? I'm talking to some Davids in this room. What are you going to do right now? Coming out of the end of this year, going into a new year. Things have been simmering and this has been going on and the other. What are you going to do? This is that critical time where, and, and if you say, well, Pastor Suarez, that, that's not me right now. That's all right. If we had CDs, I'd say buy the CD and save it for another day. But just go ahead and click the YouTube and save it for another day because we all go through those times where what we were expecting isn't what happened. And you got to make a decision there about how you are going to react to your situation. There are times where only you and your reaction are going to make it through that time. This is a decision you have to make. There comes a moment when you can't blame anybody else. You can't give any more excuses. You can't focus on everyone that did you wrong and has done you wrong. You can't be the victim and you have to own up to where you are. And you, you, I'm talking about you. Estoy hablando de ustedes. Estoy, est Estoy hablando a ti. You got to make a decision for yourself. I'm in SoCal. Tú tienes que hacer una decisión por ti mismo. Let's wait on the interpretation of that tongue. Okay, I'm back. You have to make the decision. Now, when I read the Bible, I, I'm a visual person. So it's like I see the movies in my head. I see this going on. I see David at, this, at the brink of death with his son. I see, I can feel the despair. I can feel just the, the emotions that are on him. And I'm looking at him in the movie of my mind. I see David thrown on the floor in anguish, believing. And then what he is believing for doesn't happen. And it's that point. It's like you stare at the movie. What's going to happen next? Well, here's what happened in the Bible. The Bible says that David picked himself up off of the floor and he began to clean himself off. And then the Bible says that David began to anoint himself. This, this is important. There's no priest to anoint him. There's no prophet to anoint him. His family isn't with him. David begins to anoint himself. And then it says David went back and he worshiped the Lord. There are times, ladies and gentlemen of the free chapel jury, there are times when you can't wait for pastor to pray you through, the elders to pray you through. There are times you can't wait for your favorite Facebook preacher to pray you through and to give you a like on your comment section on Facebook. There are times where you got to have enough oil in your house that you can pray yourself through, you can encourage yourself, you can, you, you can worship your way through. There are times when I can't depend to my left or to my right, but I got to make sure that there's enough oil in my house that if no one else will pray for me, that's all right. I know how to pray. If no one else can praise for me, that's okay. I know how to praise for myself. I just want to check this morning. Is there enough oil in your house? You might not have a full jug. It might not be full and overflowing, but is there enough oil in here that if no one else will do it. You say, it's all right. I'll anoint myself. I'll pray myself through. I'll encourage myself.
myself because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, somebody. God didn't fill you in the Holy Ghost to give you a one-time emotional event that you hang on a certificate on your wall, but he fills you with the Holy Ghost so that when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't walk alone. You got oil on the inside of your life. When your children get sick, you'll have oil in your house. When everything looks like it's going wrong, you'll say the joy of the Lord is my soul. I'll anoint myself. Somebody give him praise in this house. It's a decision you have to make. You say, well, Suarez, that's easier said than done. Oh, I know, but I had to make a decision. You're in the middle of a series called The Great Exchange. I just made a decision that if God's going to cause the sun to rise every morning, then I'm going to cause my praise to rise every morning. If his mercy is made new every morning, then I'm going to make sure that my faith is made new every morning because he's been better to me than I've been to myself, and I have just decided that when all hell breaks loose, I'm not going to die in despair. I'm going to get up. I'm going to wash off the bitterness. I'm going to wash off the depression and then I'm going to anoint myself until I'm through until God has made a breakthrough in me and then I'm going to go back to doing what God called me to do he didn't call me to be a complainer he didn't call me to be bitter he didn't call me to be a gossip he called me to be a praiser and praiser has nothing to do with my circumstance praise has everything to do with who he is so when I'm sick he's still God when I'm healthy he's still God so in the good and in the bad just like brother job i can say blessed be the name of the lord come on somebody praise him in this house you say that's easier said than done oh oh yes 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 you don't have authority to preach anything you haven't lived through be careful be careful preaching something you haven't lived through because what I've learned is if you preach something that you haven't lived through, God will make sure that you live through the thing that you just preached through so that you have the authority to keep preaching and telling other people what to do. I can't say it again because I speak in tongues. We all have the, God, the gift of giving people advice. I just think you need to go on a 41-day fast right now. I just, I just think you should pray in tongues, in a new tongue. That's great. And then that same person is going through trouble, and you're like, man, I just think you should. I've been praying for 72 years. Because it's easier to give advice than to live it. I was in this city almost four years ago. I was in Orange County preaching Winterfest and, a, and doing a healing crusade in Santa Ana. God had done wonderful things. Hundreds of people had been healed in those services. God had moved in a special, special way. I was feeling good. I was, I was, I was encouraged in the Lord. And my son calls me. I have three children at that time. Nine-year-old seven-year-old and a five-year-old, two boys and a girl. And my nine-year-old calls me, Daddy, you have to come home right now. Mommy tried to get out of the bed and mommy fell. Her legs aren't working. I just, Daddy, I had to call 911. The ambulance is on the way to the house. Daddy, come home. I'm on the West Coast. And I got to get home to Virginia Beach at that point where I was living. So I get on the next flight. I race home to see what's going on, and I get to a hospital, and I get the news. I wasn't, I just came out of a healing crusade. I just came out of a healing revival. I mean, I just seen God do great and mighty things, and I get home, and I get to a hospital. At 1.30 in the morning, I get the news, Mr. and Mrs. Suarez, uh, Jessica has leukemia, and she has two weeks to live. Been no symptoms. There had been nothing to prepare us for that moment. What do you do in that moment? What do you do? Because it's easy. It's easy to tell someone what to do when you're up here and you got the mic. But what do you do when you're in the hospital room and the mother of your three babies has just been given a two-week death sentence? I cry out to God. I'm like, God, where are you? Because I don't see you. I saw you in California, but I don't see you in this room. Pastor Sam calls me. He says, be careful what comes out of your mouth. For you have inquired of the Lord. You have said, God, where am I? And the Lord would remind you, where was I when the three Hebrew children stood in the fiery furnace? And he says, Tony, show me in the Bible where it says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. And I looked for it. He said, you're taking too long. Have you ever, have you ever met Pastor Sam? 
You think I talk fast. You got to hear him talk fast. I mean, I got to talk really slow compared to Pastor Sam because he's always on the go. He's already got to do. If we ever like lose the ministry, we're just going to go like work auctions in the South is what I'm thinking. He says, show me where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. He said, you're taking too long. It's not there. They never saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. He said, but the king saw the fourth man in the fiery furnace. And he said, just because you don't see God in your situation does not negate the fact that God is standing with you. And he said, and I'm telling you today, hell sees God, cancer sees God, leukemia, I, I, I'm prophesying to someone, I don't know who it is, that says, I haven't seen God in all of 2019. That does not negate the fact that God was with you. How do I know it? Because you've made it this far. And if you made it this far, it's because God has your tomorrow. God has your tomorrow in his hands. We lived through a journey, my three children and I, that lasted a, to a sum total of six months. When ultimately leukemia took Jessica's life, I became a single father immediately. From the moment of diagnosis, I became mom and dad to those babies. And then death visited our home. What do you do? What do you do when everything goes opposite of what you're believing for? That's when I found the story of David. I'm not preaching to you something just to encourage you. I'm preaching to you the story that encouraged me when all hell broke loose in my home. Because it was in that hospital that I read the story and I read what David did. And when death visited our door, that's exactly what I did. I went and I locked myself in a room. I went alone and I cried and I got all the emotion that I had to get out of me. And it's just the weird way I am. I laid on the ground of that room in the hospital and I cried. I got the emotions out. I said, now God... You're not a respected person. If you did it for David, I need you to do it for me right now. So in Jesus' name, I'm stepping up and I'm coming up out of this despair. And in Jesus' name, I'm washing depression off of me because I got three babies that need me to raise them and be their dad and their mom too. All this anguish, all this bitterness, it's coming off of me in Jesus' name. And then you'll forgive me. This is going to be a little extra Pentecostal. But I said, God... I thank you that November the 24th, 1988, you baptized me in the Holy Ghost. Back in the 80s when you got the Holy Ghost, it wasn't as sweet as now where they just kind of, you know, and they pray for you. Back then it was, <sighs> you either got it by the Spirit or because they're shaking, you're like, blah, 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 blah. so I mean, one of two ways you're getting the Holy Ghost. But right there, I needed the old-fashioned stuff. So in that room, I said, God, I thank you that in 1988, you baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And just like David anointed himself, I anoint myself right now. I anoint my three babies. I anoint Cole. I anoint Michael. I anoint Zachary. We're not going to die in despair. We're not going to die in depression. We're going to see the goodness of the Lord. We're going to land. We're going to live in the land of the of the living. God is our strength. God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? I was praying myself through. What was I doing? I was making sure there was still some oil in our house, and I was making sure the oil still. I didn't have a lot. I didn't say I was overflowing, but there was enough oil in my house that I could pray myself through and pray my three babies through. You might not be all the way full today, but make sure there's enough oil in your house that you can pray your way through. We went to that hospital room right before. That's, that's, how, I, that's how I had to make it through. But here's the story, and I'm coming to a close. Musicians can come, please. The night before Jessica passed away, when it was obvious that death was imminent, my people, my friends, our family, gathered in that room and started singing and worshiping the Lord. People snuck guitars into the ICU. Now, I've been saved too long to walk how I used to walk in the 90s, but in the 90s, my clothes were seven times too big for me, and I used to do one of those, you know, like, ah, uh, walk. Like I, I, like, I forgot how I did it, but it was one, you know, like, ah. Uh. <laughs> We were in Houston at MD Anderson, and my people walk in with winter jackets. It's 110 degrees outside, and they walk in with winter jackets. Ah, you're like, my God, we're going to be on cops tonight. They were sneaking guitars, and we got to the room. They opened their jackets. They pull out guitars. They start singing. I'm like, God, we're going to get kicked out of this room. Jessica, at that point, could no longer talk. She could only give hand signals. I didn't bring any pictures, but the last picture that I've ever shown of her is of her hand doing this. Because I got close to her and I said, Jessica, do 
do you want them to keep singing? She put her thumb up, which meant yes. Are you sure you want, because she was a singer. She was a praiser. She was a worshiper. Do you want them to keep singing? Second time. Are you sure? You can tell I'm a little eccentric, right? Are you sure? Last time she shook it, I think we had our last argument. You know, like she's like, three times now, bud. Her last act on the earth, the last thing she ever did on this earth was lift that thumb and give God her final praise. So when you ask me by what authority do I tell you to praise God in the happy and in the sad, in the good and the bad, in sickness and in health, when you say by what authority do I tell you to do that? Upon the authority of my family's testimony that when death visited our home, we didn't lose our praise and we didn't lose our oil. My children, my three babies, started with my oldest. He said, I need to talk to mommy. And he went to her deathbed and he said, mommy, I really want you to come home. But I don't want you to have cancer anymore. And daddy says, there's no cancer in heaven. He said, so I want you to, I want you to go to heaven if that's how you have to be healed. He said, but I'm going to make you proud. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to obey my dad. He forgets he said it, but I wish, I'm not going to even lie. I wish I'd have stopped be like, hold on, baby. Say, say it for the camera. Just, just say it again. Just do it again. <clears throat> and he said, I'm sorry, mommy, that I never got baptized. God's speaking to someone right now that hasn't been water baptized. You need to make a decision. Is it next Sunday? Next Sunday, you need to make your decision here right now. He said, Mommy, I'm sorry that I never got water baptized. But if Daddy gives me permission, I want to be baptized at your funeral. And he got his brother and his sister. He's a baseball player, but he turned into a little Pentecostal evangelist that day. He said, Mommy wanted to see us get baptized. I'm getting baptized. You need to get baptized. You need to get baptized. You need the Holy Ghost. You really need the Holy Ghost. And as crazy as it might sound to some of you, but at Jessica's funeral, all three of my children were buried in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins and water. And when my six-year-old came out of the water, he didn't come out speaking in English, and he didn't come out speaking in Spanish. My six-year-old came out of the water speaking in other tongues as the Holy Ghost baptized him at his mama's funeral. You know what Pastor Jensen helped me to understand when I told him the story? He said, Tony, do you realize who came to the funeral? Do you realize who came? The comforter. The comforter came. When you ask me, why aren't we crazy? Why haven't we lost our faith? It's because we didn't lose the oil. We didn't lose the oil. When we needed help, the comforter, the oil, the oil is symbolic of the anointing. The anointing is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is also called the counselor, the wonderful counselor. When it's called the comforter, when all hell broke loose in our home, there was still oil. There was still oil in our home. When you ask me, why haven't you lost your faith? I made a decision. I'm 40 years old. And when I look over the trajectory of my life, I lived through five years of hell. I buried my dad, and 17, 18 months later, I buried Jessica. I lived through the valley of the shadow of death. But I had to make a decision that when I look over the totality of my life, I've had a few bad years. But God has been with me every step of the way. And I made a decision. I'm not going to lose a lifetime of faith over a few bad years. Because he's been with me here, 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 and here. This was horrible. But this isn't going to quench my faith. Because I saw him here. He brought me through here. And I know that I'm going from glory to glory and victory to victory. But that's not how the story ends. Because God makes all things new. Because there was a man and a woman in Michigan named Corey and Gina McCool. They were pastors. Great, great man of God. Traveled the country singing. Recorded albums. And 10 years ago, 
at Christmas. He was diagnosed with colon cancer. And six months later, after he battled valiantly for his life, he passed away from colon cancer, leaving a widow named Gina and two babies that were five and one. Gene and I have made a decision that till Jesus comes, we'll honor Corey and Jessica's life so that their pain and their death might not be in vain, but so that, you, so that we can encourage others. Because w w when I met, I met Gina, I met Gina March of last year, April, we went on our first date. Like, I don't know how to date. Like, I have no game. Okay, I don't know who's boo. I don't know who's bay. Social media's messing stuff up. And like, and like, I'm too Pentecostal. Like, I'm at the date. I'm like, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a life? She's like, would you pray for the food? I'm like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing of the Lord. Rebuke every demonic spirit that tried to tell. Scarves, I bind you in the name of Jesus. It was really weird. And on our first date, I mean, you saw her. She's too pretty for me. Our first date, I'm looking. I'm like, I'm going to marry you. She's like, you don't even know my middle name. I said, when does that ever come up? Like, when do I ever got to know that? And then we got to talking to each other, telling each other's story. And we found out that we had lived through the same valley of the shadow of death. We had gone through the same thing. Her longer than I, waiting nine years. Thank God she waited. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you, Jesus, as she waited. And then she told me the story of this amazing man named Corey. Would you stand with me in this room? Who on his deathbed wrote his final song. And his final song said, you control it all. You control it all. The good and the bad. The happy and the sad. You control it all. You control it all. I find shelter in the storm. When I'm, when I'm resting in your arms. Because I know you control it all. Body racked with cancer. Yet he didn't lose his praise. The amazing thing about Corey's story is his final day on this earth. Jessica, uh, with Gina and his parents around the bed. He looked at Gina and he smiled and he said, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. And his last words on this earth were to look at his family and say, we win. We win. Our collective testimony is that when death visited our home, we didn't lose our praise and we didn't lose our victory. And now God has made all things new. He took seven broken people and he made us one whole family. And Corey and Jessica may have passed away, but their five children still sing their songs and they still sing to their God. And if you could see all 52 of my kids, as because it's five, but it feels like it's a daycare at our house. If you could see all of those kids, you don't see depression, you see joy. Why? Because there's still oil in our house. There's oil in our house. There's a praise on our lips. So I'm, here, I'm, I'm not here just preaching you a Bible story, but I'm preaching you something I've had to live I don't know what you're going through. And, and, and by the way, the Lord would prompt me to tell someone today, don't diminish your struggle just because it's not like mine. Say, well, I didn't lose a spouse. That doesn't make your pain any less than mine. Pain is relative. So don't allow the enemy to say, well, you haven't gone through anything. Whatever you're going through is what you're going through. And all I'm telling you is whatever it is, make sure you have oil. Make sure you have a prayer life. Make sure you got a song on your lips. Make sure you got a praise in your spirit. Because when all hell breaks loose, it's the anointing that'll bring you through. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that'll bring you through. And if you can shout for God in the valley, then I promise you're going to inherit the mountaintop. Would you lift your hands and give God a mighty praise all over this place right now? 
Hey there, Ben Prescott here. I want to thank you for tuning in to this message. I hope that you were encouraged. I'd love to invite you, if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you can stay up to date with everything that's happening here at Free Chapel in Orange County and all of our messages. Also, if you would like to partner with us, you can click the Give button and help us to advance God's kingdom right here in Orange County. We love you. Have an amazing week. God bless.